Hi, how are you guys doing today? My name is Omar. I'm from Master Academy. I'm one of the owners right here. I uh, wanted to do a video so I can go over some of the sanitation and disinfection now that we have this whole new virus going on, the COVID-19. So we're going to be covering some of the things that we're going to be advising some of our students to be doing. Um, I talked to some of the guys from my barbershop as well, so they're going to be also implementing the same thing. So I wanted to go over some of you guys because I know a lot of you guys have been sending me messages and asking me if I can do a video explaining some of the things that I would recommend for you guys to be doing at your barbershop. Um, there are a lot of things that you guys need to take into consideration just to kind of like help out the safety um, of your clients, make sure that they feel better when they're coming in, make sure that they're not, um, they're not scared to come into your barbershop. They see that you're taking a lot of precautions. And a lot of these things, to be honest with you, they're not things that they are very expensive. A lot of these things are actually very economical. So you'll be able to do a lot of this stuff that I'm telling you without having a huge budget cut. Okay, so don't think, oh man, I have to charge a lot more now because you know I'm wasting a lot of money on supplies. That was one of the things that a lot of people were telling me. They felt like they were gonna be wasting a lot more money on supplies and equipment and you know, and I was telling them like, no, not really, you know, it's not a big deal. Um, we're already supposed to be disinfecting and sanitizing our tools regardless. So this is gonna be just a couple of extra steps that you have to take in order for your clients to be nice and safe. Um, remember, honestly, like our big main thing is, you know, we have state board on top of us for our sanitation and disinfection, our client safety, um, our safety as well. Make sure that we don't get infected. Make sure that our clients are nice and safe and we're nice and safe because we still have to go home after this. Okay. So let's go ahead and go through the steps of somebody coming into your barbershop. This is going to be our model for right now. Obviously, when they come in, you have to make sure that they're wearing a mask. From the minute they walk in through your door, they're supposed to be wearing a mask. Okay. You guys got to take their temperature. Remember, these are things that the health department was the one that actually came in and told us what were the guidelines going to be. One of the guidelines is you have to do temperature checks. So you have to make sure that they don't have a fever. Okay. Um, also, number two is that they're wearing a mask. Okay. So you have to make sure that they're not, that they're wearing a mask and they don't have a fever. Okay. Um, there are some barbershops that are doing waivers. So if you want to do a waiver, you can also do that as well, just to kind of protect yourself a little bit more. I have some samples um, at my barbershop. We make them sign a waiver saying that they did what is called a, a self check at home, like an assessment that they're supposed to be doing at the house before they go to the barbershop. You know, it's just kind of like letting, asking themselves, have I been in contact with anybody within the last 48 hours that have tested positive or has symptoms? Um, have you yourselves had any symptoms? Um, it has like a whole checklist that they're supposed to do at home, uh, like a self-assessment test before they go to the barbershop. When they go to the barbershop, they sign the waiver saying that they did that at home. So this way we kind of feel a little bit more safer as well, okay? So I do have some samples of those. If you want it, go ahead and send me a message. Um, also, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel that we're adding. We're gonna be doing more videos as we're going along as well. Um, and just send me a message, you know, I'll go ahead and try to send me your email and I'll go ahead and forward you some of the waivers that we have that we've been using in our barbershop and that we're going to be using here for the students and for the clients. Okay. So first thing, when they walk into the barbershop, again, they got to make sure they're wearing the mask. You, the barber has to be wearing a mask as well. Some people are using the visors. Um, that's fine. You can also use, you can do both. You can do the visor, which is going to be the plastic shield and the mask itself or you can do just the mask itself. Um, you cannot do just the uh, shield itself. That's the one thing that a lot of people have been asking me because I guess they're a little bit more comfortable. They can breathe a little bit better. They're asking me if they can do just the shield with no mask under. No, uh, if the health department or state board goes in there and they see you wearing not wearing a mask and you're only wearing a shield, they could tell you something or they might give you a fine, okay? So they come into the, uh, to the barbershop, you know, they're walking in with their, um, mask on you're gonna go ahead and do this one check their temperature okay this guy's good um, so once they check their temperature now they can go ahead and walk into the barbershop okay go ahead and put this away we're gonna go ahead and the first thing you always do nowadays again remember first thing we do is put on our gloves you have to wear gloves before you start touching anything from the clients Okay, sanitize your hands before you touch the gun to be able to take the temperature because other barbers might have to wear, use it as well. If you're the only one using it, then it's a little bit different. But if you guys are sharing one at the barbershop, make sure you sanitize your hands before you touch it or sanitize the, the gun itself after you use it, okay? 
but sanitation is a big deal nowadays. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and put on our gloves. Okay, and this is again, before you start draping the client, before you do anything to the client, put on your gloves. Make sure that you're protected before you start touching anything, okay? They're gonna be wearing their t-shirts and all that stuff, okay? Um, one of the things that I started buying myself is I actually just went to uh, a beauty supply, barber supply store, and you can actually buy a roll. You can order, um, also order them on Amazon. Uh, this is a 50 pack of disposable capes so that the client, you're not wearing the same cape over and over. Remember this virus, if they cough on their shirt, it gets stuck on the drape. The drape itself, when you put it on the next client, it's gonna get on their shirt. And if the client goes home and wipes off their face with it, now they got contaminated, okay? So using the same drape over and over and over on a barber, on a client, I mean, you know, can be cross-contamination. So you have to be very careful with that. You know, I will suggest you guys, you know, invest a little bit. This one right here, you can get, uh, today I actually bought it. It's a 50 pack of disposable capes. And this one was only $25. So you're looking at about 50 cents a cape. You know, actually I'm lying, it was $15. So it's a lot cheaper than that, like 25, 30 cents a cape. So $15, 50 disposable capes, you know, that's a good investment right there. You can get them um, at Nancy's, they're gonna start carrying him. Uh, Jazzy, you can get them at, you know, your local barber beauty supply store, ask them, call them. If not, you can order them on Amazon. The only thing on Amazon, I believe right now, they're taking a little bit long to be able to get them. So if you need them right away, or I would suggest you to get them right away, just go find out where your local barbershop supplies are. Uh, beauty supplies, Sally's might carry it, I'm not 100% sure, but just find out where they have them close to you, okay? Okay, so this is gonna be our disposable case. They actually come already pre-cut, so you, all you gotta do is just kinda cut into it. So obviously you can see this is the neck part. These right here are the ties. So these are the ones that are gonna go around and you're gonna tie to the back, okay? This one's right here is gonna be the drape itself, okay? So I'll show you guys how to put that on right now. One of the things that um, a lot of barbers are complaining is that when they're cutting hair, the mask itself bothers them a lot when they're cutting hair. So one of the things that um, I've seen people do it and I think it's a good idea is to use a Sanix and Sanix are very cheap. You know, they're, you can get them for a really good price. You can actually use a Sanix to be able to tie the mask and get it out of your way so that you don't, it doesn't bother you throughout the haircut. What we're gonna be doing here, it's gonna be, and I'll show you guys right now, we're gonna grab this side right here and we're gonna get it from here, right? Then we're gonna grab this side right here and we're gonna get the other side, okay? So we have one side, we'll grab the other side and all you're gonna do is take it off from the ear loop so and bring it back down here, hold it, and then you're gonna tie it, okay? So just use your Sanix like if you're gonna tie it, okay? And that's it, it's out of your way. Now it's a little bit lower from the sideburn. It still stays on their nose and it covers their mouth and it holds on right here. And now you can actually put it either wider or tighter, whatever the preference is for the client itself, okay? So you get it out of the way, you can bring this even lower if you wanna bring this lower, but you're gonna be using a Sanix to be able to tie it. And again, just loop it around once, loop it around the other one, bring it to the bottom, make one tie knot, and that's it. It's out of the way now. It doesn't bother you anymore, okay? Then we're gonna go ahead and get our other Sanix that we're gonna be using for the bottom part like we normally do. We're gonna put it around the collar. And then we can put our disposable cape itself, okay? And again, most of these disposable capes actually have a little thing where you can tie it. I've seen some videos where I've seen um, the barbers actually using the ties from the plastic drapes themselves to be able to tie the, the ear loops instead of using the Sanix, which is again, acceptable. We're gonna go ahead and tie this up. Okay, sorry about that. We're gonna go ahead and put the Sanix back on here. You know, it takes a little bit of practice, so, you know, try it a couple of times before you decide to do it yourselves. You know, let me retie this again. You know, I think it's better if I tie the Sanix up a little bit here. You know, make sure the Sanix is nice and firm. And we're gonna go ahead and tie my cape. Obviously this guy doesn't have shoulders, so it's a little bit harder to tie, but you know, we're gonna go ahead and get it nice and tight, okay? So we're gonna do the same thing that we do for the drapes. We're gonna bring down the Sanix, okay? 
So now we have our draping done. We have a plastic drape and this is gonna protect the client itself. Okay, so this is how yours is gonna be. You're gonna have your Sanix protecting the plastic drape from touching the client. And you're gonna have the little Sanix that we're using in the back to tie this, to bring it down, okay? So now we have the whole head to be able to access it. We have everything tied down here. At the end, we discard this, we throw this away, we throw the Sanix away, we throw this Sanix away, and this one, we bring it back up. So once we're done with our full service, you know, again, we get this one, this is gonna be trash, this is gonna be trash, roll this up, throw this away. Our Sanix, we're not gonna be using it no more. You can rip it, put their, your things back again, throw this away, okay? So everything that we use is disposable. So you can just throw all that away, stuff away. And now the client, we're done with the haircut, it didn't bother us at all, okay? Hopefully you guys like this right here. Again, the disposable case, very cheap, very inexpensive. The Sanix are very cheap, very inexpensive. And taking a couple minutes to be able to do all that stuff is really gonna make your client feel like, you know, they're being protected. You're using everything clean and new for them as well. They might even tip you more, you know, because you're taking those extra precautions that other barbers might not be wearing. You can even explain it to them. That's one thing that I noticed. If you explain to them like, oh, you know what, um, I bought these for you guys so you can feel a little bit safer, you know, I'll make sure that you guys are not using the same drape from person to person. They might give you an extra tip, you know, an extra $5, an extra $3, an extra $4, whatever it is, which is way more than what you're investing in that plastic drape and on the Sanix in the back, okay? So don't think that that's money gone to waste. No, trust me, clients really appreciate all that stuff. So you wanna make sure that you do that, okay? So again, remove this right here, bring it to the bottom, tie it in the back with the Sanix, okay? Tie it in the back with the Sanix down here, um, use the plastic drape to be able to cover them and you'll be good to go, okay? So you're done with the service. Let's get this guy out of here. We just gave him a fresh haircut. Now we're gonna cover a little bit about the sanitizing part, okay? The disinfecting part, okay? Um, another thing too, make sure that uh, your clients are wearing masks. If for some reason they don't have a mask when they get there, they forgot it at home, buy yourself a box. You know, that's another way to even make more money as well, okay? I got this box at Jazz. You can buy them at Nancy's. You can buy them anywhere else as well. Um, this box has, how many masks? 50, it has 50 pieces. You get it for like, 25 30 dollars right so you get them for 50 cents sell them for two dollars you know i mean they forgot it last minute thing tell them like hey you know what we sell them here at the barbershop they're two dollars each you know um they get to keep it as well they take it home with themselves okay so you can buy these and also resell them at the barbershop or if you want to give them away to your clients that's up to you you know that's another investment you know oh you forgot your mask don't worry about it i got you it's free i'll give you one for free Again, they might tip you $5, which is gonna be more than selling it to them for a dollar or $2, okay? So think about investments, think about things that you can do to make money, okay? So it's always good to have one of these extra ones. Um, I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about this one, the neck duster. I know a lot of you guys use this one, the ones that had hair on it. Um, to be honest with you guys, a lot of you guys use it, please, during this whole time with the COVID-19, um, do not use this. This one, you're you know cleaning out the people, it touches your skin, and you're not disinfecting this one. This one is really hard to disinfect because it's hair. If you put chemicals on it, it's gonna damage the hair. So most of you guys are not disinfecting this one for using it from client to client, touching skin and hair to skin and hair. Please do not use this one. I know we're so used to using it, but do not use it. It's gonna be a lot better, okay? So this one, Throw it away, put it away in your cabinet, do whatever you gotta do, but get rid of this one right here. Leave it away so yeah, you don't even have it in front of you to be able to use it, okay? So get rid of this one. If for some reason you're just, you need a neck duster, you have to have one, then get the ones that are made out of plastic, which are these right here. I know we don't like these right here as much, but get one of these. These are plastic. This one, you can dip it in the barbicide, you can disinfect it the right way from client to client it's not gonna dry up that fast. So I wouldn't even recommend you even using this one as well, because you can actually get the, the, the COVID all the way to the inside of it, and it's gonna be very hard to disinfect it. So if you have to use one, use something that you can disinfect, okay? Uh, but even then, I would recommend you guys not even using this one. My choice right now that I'm using to be able to 
uh, clean out somebody is I use a towel, a clean towel to kind of get all the hair off of them or I use a comb. I'm using one of these. I cut, I have this in my hand and I just brush off the hair. Cut, brush off the hair. These right here are easily disinfected after every haircut. So you can actually just get them and you know use them. Um, they sell these really inexpensive at Sally's. I think you get a whole box of 12 for maybe like five bucks. So you use a packet a day, at the end of the day, put everything together, sanitize it, disinfect it. Um, remember, use one per client to be able to, before you get them disinfected, okay? So this one will come in really handy. All right, so I'm gonna go over some of the stuff that I have here. This is the things that you guys have available to be able to use in your barbershop or at your salon or whatever it is that you guys are working at uh, to be able to disinfect. This one right here, I'm sure most of you guys are already familiar with it. This is your barbicide. This is the one that we use a lot of. This is a concentrated form. So this one right here goes into with water, right? So we're gonna be putting some of this one into your quads. This is the color that you guys want your quads to be, you know, which is gonna be kind of like a light blue color. It's not too dark and it's not too light. If you guys make them super dark, I know some of you guys are like, oh, you know, I like to make my uh, really dark so that, you know, it cleans and disinfects, right? It won't work like that. If you guys are doing them too dark, what's gonna happen is that it starts biting into the plastic and it starts melting. Your clips are gonna start rattling. It's gonna be too strong for your clips and it's gonna start messing up everything. So don't do it. You know, make it a lighter one. That color is perfect right there. So that's what you wanna do. You don't wanna make them too dark because then it starts biting into the plastic or breaking down your plastic, okay? So this is our number one tool that we use to disinfect all of our tools. Um, you, you would put them in here, of course, before you put them in there, you're supposed to wash out your tools, you know, get rid of all the hair, the debris, the dirt, you know, use some soap, wash them out real quick, and then throw them in the barbicide. Don't throw them in the barbicide when they're full of hair, because then your barbicide is gonna get dirty. And once your barbicide is dirty, you're not gonna be able to use it no more. Or if for some reason, Stabler walks in and your barbicide is dirty, because what they're gonna do, they're gonna come to your barbershop, they're gonna go like this and they're gonna look for anything floating around. If they see a lot of trash, a lot of hair floating around, that's a citation right there, okay? So make sure that you guys are not um, using, putting it in there before you rinse them out and remove all the hair, okay? So this is our number one tool. This is our barbicide. This is a bactericidal. It kills viruses, it kills bacteria, it kills uh, fungi, fungi. Um, I mean, it just pretty much destroys and kills everything there to be able to make sure that your tools are nice and clean, okay? A couple of other stuff as well. This one right here, this is a clipper site. See, it says germicidal, fungicidal, pseudomycidal, vericidal, and tuberculocidal. So it kind of just pretty much destroys everything as well. It kills bacteria, fungi, and uh, viruses. So this one's really good for your clippers. It disinfects, lubricates, cleans, cools, and anti-rust. This is the one also that Stable recommends for you guys to have in your station when they go to your shop. If you have the Andes 5-in-1, some of those don't have the part where it says tuberculocidal, um, so you wanna make sure that it's the right one. They wanna make sure that it has all of those. And it says germicidal, fungicidal, pseudomonicidal, vericidal, and tuberculocidal, okay? So again, this one's right here, are really good for your clippers to disinfect them the right way, okay? Um, some of you guys are familiar with Ship and Shape. This one's made by the uh, same company as the blue one, which is the Barbicide. This one right here is not a disinfectant. This is just to kind of clean your clean your clips, brushes, combs, everything before they get dipped into the barbicide, okay? So this is the one that you would use with water to be able to wash them off, get all the grease, get all the dirt, all that stuff off before you put them into the disinfectant, okay? So this is not a disinfectant itself. This is just to clean them out a little bit, okay? All right, um, obviously we have alcohol. Remember right now, you can use alcohol for your blades, for your scissors, for stuff like that. Just have to make sure that you're, it's a over 60% alcohol concentrate before you use it, okay? Some alcohol bottles are only 50%, uh, 55%, 40%, 30%. It has to be above 60% for it to be effective against the coronavirus, okay? So make sure that you guys have alcohol that's over 60% to be able to make sure that it's effective, okay? You can use this one to disinfect as well, okay? Obviously, we have Lysol. Lysol is gonna be used for the counters, for the chairs, 
you know, for anything that you might want to do. This is not used for your tools. I wouldn't put this on your tools, brushes, stuff like that, especially if you're going to be using them right out in the clients after that. You want to make sure you don't put no chemicals on your brushes or combs right before you touch the client's skin. A lot of them might have an allergic reaction. Um, it might get, your skin might get irritated. So you want to make sure that you don't put any of this on your brushes right before you put them on their skin, okay? They might break out in hives. They might break out in irritation. And their first immediate thing is going to be, oh, I got the virus. So you want to make sure you don't prevent that. Um, again, Lysol is not for the skin. This one, you can put it on top of your counter. You can spray down your chair. You know, you can do all that stuff. Now, Lysol is a little bit hard to get right now because a lot of people use them at the house, at their office, at schools, at barbershops, salons, everywhere. People are buying Lysol. So it's going like crazy right now. So it's gonna be kind of hard for you guys to get Lysol. If you have some, you know, that's good for you. But um, in case you don't have it, you know, there's a lot of other options. This is another option. This one right here is mostly for hospital disinfectants. This one right here, you can actually buy it at uh, Sally. Some, some beauty supply stores have them. Um, this bottle is about maybe $12 to $15. Um, this one right here is also a hospital germicidal deodorizing cleaner. So it does kill bacteria, it kills um, viruses, it kills uh, mildew, fungi. So it does kill everything really good. It's a really good cleaner but it's just a little bit pricier and sometimes it's kind of hard to get as well, okay? So if you guys have some of this, you know, really good cleaner, you guys can use it, disinfect your chairs, disinfect your counters, disinfect all that stuff, okay? Um, another thing that we can have to use is the Clorox Wipes. This one right here, um, it's a really good cleanser, but the only problem with this one is that if you're touching Clorox with your hands a lot, you tend to get your hands really dry. So I would suggest you guys, you know, make sure you guys are wearing gloves or something when you're touching these, if you're gonna be using these a lot. You can use these again to wipe down your counters, to wipe down your chair, to wipe down your stuff. This is not recommended for your tools, okay? Um, again, just be really careful because if you touch it a lot with your hands, bare hands, it might start cracking, it might start over drying your hands, okay? But really good, but again, also, these are also selling out really fast. So, you know, it might not be a great choice to get or easy choice to get. Okay. These are another thing. These are barber side wipes. So these wipes are actually really good for your tools. These are going to be good for your combs, brushes, for your scissors, you know, for stuff like that. Um, there's not that many of these, so it's kind of hard to get these. These are wipes. You open them here and you start pulling them out one by one. You can use those to clean your um, your tools that you're going to be using. Okay. So this is like barber side, the blue one but in wipes. So they're really good. They, can, they disinfect really good. They're just not that easy to find, and I believe they're pretty expensive as well, okay? So that's another choice that you guys have. Now, the one thing I did want to tell you guys right now is actually I came out, I went to Home Depot, you know, not that long ago, and I found this one right here. This was called Insight, really good disinfectant. It's gonna be for vericidal sanitizer, uh, deodorizer it kills 99.9% .9 of bacteria if you look in the back it says that it also kills the coronavirus okay so this one is an actually really good cleanser I've been using it lately right here at the Academy I've been using it at the barbershops really good to clean um, the smell is actually not that strong too because some of the cleansers when you spray them the smell is really strong okay and it kind of makes you messes you up a little bit this one right here, to be honest with you, it doesn't really smell. It kind of smells like Windex, but it's a really good cleanser. This whole gallon is only $9.99 at Home Depot, okay? And it can last you a very long time. So I would really recommend you guys go to Home Depot, stock up on these before they sell out. I actually have about maybe 15 gallons of these right here at the school. We were gonna be using them for the students. We're gonna be using them for the shop. Um, every time I go to Home Depot, I make sure I buy one or two gallons of these. They had a lot of them right now, so make sure you guys stock up. This is called Insight, you know, if you guys want a link or anything like that information, uh, send me a message. But this one's a really good cleanser. You know, put it in a bottle, spray bottle, and you're good to go, okay? So that's gonna be one of the best ones that I recommend you guys. It's a really good cleanser, very low odor, you know, sprays really good, disinfects, it cleans out everything. It actually says right there that it's made specifically for the coronavirus. So that's gonna be a really good cleaner. $9.99, you can beat that as well. You can probably fill up a couple of the bottle bottles, so the spray bottles, use them for disinfectants. 
make sure that you guys are labeling everything. Everything has to have a label, what's inside of it, okay? Um, for hand sanitizers, I mean, the good thing is that right now that way everything is reopening, we are gonna be able to get more hand sanitizers. I know Home Depot is carrying them, Kmart's carrying them, Walmart, Target, everybody has hand sanitizer nowadays, okay? Um, what I do is I actually get them by the gallon and then I fill up my water bottles. You know, I put, um, I like the liquid one. I feel like it kind of spreads out a little bit more and it doesn't leave uh, so much residue on your hands. But again, it goes by favorite. You know, I like the hand sanitizer spray. Spray it on your clients as they're walking in. You know, when they walk in, let me see your hands. Boom, boom, spray it on their hands and have them rub them together. You know, this is really cheap. Again, you can buy the gallon. The gallon, I think it's like $25. Um, it fills up a good amount of these right here and it lasts you a very long time, okay? So hand sanitizer labeled again, because this is a generic bottle. So if you guys are using generic bottles to put hand sanitizer and cleanser, make sure that you guys have a label on it, okay? Um, Home Depot actually was selling these right here. So I bought a couple of these already pre-labeled hand sanitizer as well. Um, this one right here has 60, let me tell you guys right now. It has 66% alcohol, so it's a pretty good disinfectant. And this one says, says alcohol sanitizer spray. This one right here and on the back, it tells you hand sanitizing. So it is for your hands as well. It already comes in a spray bottle. This whole sec, this whole bottle was only like $8. So it's a good way to have it. Stock up right now because if we do have a flare up and let's say, you know, people start running to the stores, you wanna make sure you have enough bottles, hand sanitizer, disinfectants, everything in your barbershops. Regardless, before this whole epidemic started going on, before you know all the pandemic started going on, we already had hand sanitizer in our station. We already had disinfectant solutions in our stations. So make sure that you guys are buying them because even after all this is done, we still gotta keep sanitizing our tools. We still gotta keep sanitizing our chairs, stations, uh, countertops, you know, everything. So hand sanitizer is always gonna come in handy. So even after all this is done, don't think, oh, I'm gonna buy a lot and then what if all this is over? I'm not gonna need it. Yes, you are. You are gonna need it. You are gonna keep using it. So make sure you stock up on it, okay? All right. Um, our tools that we're using, best way to sanitize them, just use one of these. These are made specifically for your clippers. Do not spray Clorox on these. Do not spray Lysol on this. Um, don't spray alcohol as one on them. You know, just get yourself the clipper side, spray them, make sure they get fully saturated, the blade part especially. You know, some people like to run them. You can run it as well. And just make sure that they're nicely disinfected for every client. You need to disinfect your tools on every, before every client, okay? Uh, get yourself into a routine. What I do at the barbershop is I usually have just, as soon as I'm done with the haircut, I clean out all my tools, disinfect everything, and then I go ahead and remove my client stuff. So by the, ten, the time the next client is already sitting down in my chair, at least 10 to 15 minutes have passed by. Because most of the disinfectant solutions that we have back here, your barber side, everything else, takes a lot, at least 10 to 15 minutes for it to work properly, okay? If you're getting your machine and you're spraying it two minutes before you start using it, it hasn't had enough time to work, okay? You guys look at all the directions in the back, it tells you right there, it says, wait 10 to 15 minutes for it to be fully effective, okay? All right, guys, um, that's pretty much it. You know, these are the things that we use, the other things that I have, my hand sanitizers, I have everything. You guys make sure you guys have a box of Kleenex available for your clients. If they start sweating, don't grab a towel and you start wiping it down the way we used to before. Give them a, a Kleenex, let them pick it up and let them clean their own face and discard it or put it in their pockets, okay? Uh, there's a couple of things, again, you know, make sure you guys are top of it, you know, using the disposable caves. I mean, you're talking about 30 cents. That's not gonna hurt you. Using a Sanex to be able to bring the, the things on the ear down to the bottom of the neck so all this area is open and clear for you, that's not gonna hurt you. You know, using all these little things, disinfecting, giving yourself the time. You know, if your prices need to go up a little bit because now you're giving yourself more time to disinfect and all that stuff, that's fine, trust me. You know, people are not gonna mind paying an extra $5, you know, just to feel safe. 
You know, if you tell me, hey, you know what, your haircuts used to be $20, now they're gonna be 25 because I have to take an extra 10, 15 minutes as precautions for your safety to make sure that we're using the sanitizer to make sure that, you know, I'm draping you the proper the way. I wanna make sure you feel safe when you come to my barbershop. If you're doing that, trust me, people are not gonna complain for an extra $5, okay? So hopefully this helped you guys out. Um, if you guys have any questions, leave your comments below. I will try to get back to you as soon as possible. Make sure you guys are subscribing to our YouTube channel. Um, again, you guys follow me on Instagram at Barber Crew, at Barber Crew. Um, follow me on Instagram. I'll follow you guys back. If you guys have any questions or comments, or if you guys want to you know, make another video for something else, please let me know, okay? I will try to make another video in Spanish, um, hopefully. But if not, I mean, I think everything's visible. You can kind of see what it is, okay? Uh, but that's pretty much it. Thank you to my model. <laughs> uh, and these are all my cleaning disinfectant sprays. Again, Barberside wipes, Clorox wipes, disinfectant spray for your machines, alcohol, minimum 60%. This one right here is a hospital germicidal cleaner. This one you can find it at Sally's or other places. This was the one that I really recommend you guys. Go to Home Depot, stock up on these $10, okay? This one right here is the one that State Board requires you to have. So also another thing too, like if you guys have a barbershop or a salon, State Board's gonna go to your barbershop, do an inspection. They wanna see this container. They wanna know where you're getting the liquid that you're putting inside your barberside jar from, okay? So make sure that even if this is empty, keep a bottle. They're gonna ask you, where's your bottle at? The one that you're using to refill the liquid. If you don't have one, they will give you a citation for this, okay? So you have to have one of those. Lysol, perfect for disinfecting countertops and your chairs. Shape and shape, you use this one, mix it up with a little bit of water, and you can actually um, use it to clean out your brushes before you disinfect them, okay? Um, that's pretty much it. And again, the mask, you know, make sure that they're wearing a mask. Make sure you're checking their temperature. If you guys want the waiver, I have the waiver available for you guys as well. Um, buy yourself a, a box of masks and you know just sell them to your clients make sure you text them you know uh, remember right now they're not allowing people to be waiting inside the barbershop or salon or nail salon or massage place anywhere they don't want people waiting around so if you guys have people waiting make sure they wait outside in the car and you text them you know if people are trying to walk in there's no walk-ins right now allowed as well everybody should be through appointment itself um, they can actually make an appointment, go to their car, wait a little bit, come back when they're ready to go. Make sure you guys keep in contact with your clients and talk to them, you know. Most clients are not gonna complain if you're communicating with them. If all of a sudden they walk in and your prices are $10 more, then it's not gonna make sense. You gotta communicate with your clients. Let them know, hey, you know what, I'm, I'm gonna go $5 up on my prices because I need to buy extra stuff. You know, I need to sanitize more. I'm gonna give everybody an extra 10, 15 minutes to make sure that everybody's being um, sanitized, my tools are sanitized, make sure that you're getting the protection that you need, um, all that stuff, okay? If you guys have any questions, let me know, okay? Thank you guys for watching.